Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your dive CD lessons. First, work the problems with me. Work every single problem that I work and take notes on everything that I write on the board. One thing I encourage you to do is on the first practice problem, work that one with me, but then for the second and subsequent ones, pause the CD, try to work the problem on your own, then fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, you can move on to the next one. If you got it wrong, rewind the CD, look at how to pro solve the problem, and figure out how to do it correctly. Next, anytime you need to, pause and rewind the CD until you understand that particular concept. The ability to pause and rewind so easily is what makes dive CD lessons so much better than a live classroom lecture, so make sure and take advantage of that technology. Next, remember the purpose of math is to teach you to think and to solve problems, to effectively and efficiently think and solve problems. In the lower math levels, there's lots of mental math. In the upper levels especially, this is the most important purpose of math, is to teach you to think and to solve problems. Next, do all of the problems in the problem sets. It depends on the course that you're doing, but typically you'll do three to five problem sets a week, so that means three to five CD lessons plus a test. Next, work the homework problems and your test problems too. Work those vertically. Split your paper in two and work them vertically. And of course, make sure you show your work on your problems too. As you work them vertically, write each step down and write each subsequent step underneath the previous one. And this will help you sometimes to recognize patterns a little bit easier and help you solve the problem better. Also use a calculator sparingly, only for geometry problems and some word problems. Don't use it for math 7, 6 or below that for, for any of that. Algebra half and up, use it sparingly. And lastly, have a good attitude. Every day you do school, you have a choice to make. It is your personal choice to have a good attitude, work hard, do your best, or to be lazy, complain, whine, and have a bad attitude. So choose right now to have a good attitude. Dive in, take advantage of this CD lesson, and do your best to learn the math that you're going to learn today. Lesson 5 is on addition and subtraction word problems. These problems, what we'll be doing here is applying what you learned in Lesson 3, at the end of Lesson 3, on the addition and subtraction patterns, where you had a missing value. And I think the best way to understand these is just to do some. So let's look at practice problem A. It says, hundreds of salmon entered the stream. Bears ate 315 of them. If 211 salmon survived, how many originally entered the stream? Now, you'll be doing lots of word problems in algebra all through high school. One of the most important things is translating the words that you've been given into an algebra problem. We know these are addition and subtraction word problems, so think of addition and subtraction patterns when you see one of these problems. Think about hundreds of salmon entering a stream and bears ate 315 of those salmon. So would you subtract or would you add 315 to that hundreds of salmon? Well, you would subtract because eating them is like subtracting out from the population, right? 211 salmon survived. That's what's left over. That's the difference from the subtraction. And so when you do a word problem and you want to make an equation, an algebra equation to help you solve the problem, it's kind of like changing languages, going from English words to algebra words. So we're trying to figure out how many originally entered the stream. It says that hundreds of salmon entered the stream, but we don't know how many that was. That's our missing number, just like in our addition and subtraction pattern problems, we always had a missing number. So let's just call that H for hundreds. And the bears ate 315, so we'll subtract 315 from that. 211 survived. So how do we figure out how many originally entered the stream? How do we figure out what H is? Well, remember what you do here? That is usually the biggest number in the group, so you're going to add the other two numbers that you have together. So we'll just put a 315 down here. Add these, and we'll get 6 Two, five. That's how many originally entered the stream. We'll write over here H equals 526. 
in a word problem you're always looking for key words too to help you think about how to set up an equation based on that problem. The bears ate 315 so that told us about subtraction. We'd be subtracting from that original amount that we were trying to solve for. 211 survived that told us that that was the result of that problem where the bears ate hundreds of the salmon. So you look for keywords to help you change that word problem into basically an algebra problem. Algebra problems, they usually have some missing value that you're trying to find. And we use a symbol like an H to stand for hundreds. That's our missing value. We use a letter to represent that missing number. Let's do another problem. Let's read it through first. That's always what you do with word problems is read it through one time first figure out what they're asking about. Initially, there were 2,811 golf balls at the driving range. At the end of the day, only 2,539 were accounted for. How many golf balls were missing? So we're trying to find this missing amount of golf balls. Well, think of that word missing. Doesn't that think, make you think of subtraction? It wouldn't make you think of addition, really. You're missing an amount, so that's like a subtracted amount you know that there were 200,000 or 2,811 golf balls to start with and from that you could subtract that missing amount to get the amount that you had at the end of the day 2,539 so there's an equation that you can set up based on that word problem now that second number in a subtraction problem like that you usually know that that's a smaller number to figure out what it is, then, we would need to do 2,811 minus 2,539. So let's do that over to the side. 2811 minus 2539. And do that subtraction. We'll need to borrow from this 1 right here. So that becomes a 0. That's an 11. 11 minus 9 is 2. 0 minus 3, we need to borrow so we'll have 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 minus 5 is 2, 272. That's the missing number. That's how many golf balls were missing at the end of the day. We can always check our work on these, right? 2811 minus 272. See if that really does equal 2,539. We'd borrow and get 11 minus 2 is 9 then we'd have 10 borrow again 10 minus 7 is 3 7 minus 2 is 5 2 minus 0 is 0 2,539 so that is correct 272 that's the missing amount of golf balls so I have some of the key words and phrases highlighted here initially so that tells you you have this starting amount and that that means you're going to be adding or subtracting from that starting amount were accounted for that means like a result they went back out and they found all their golf balls and that was the result 2539 were accounted for so that's like your answer or in this case your difference in your subtraction problem and then how many were missing that tells you where the unknown value needs to go you need to subtract that from the initial amount that tells you how many were accounted for so on these word problems, read them through once. You know they're going to be either an addition or subtraction type of pattern to them. Look for keywords to help you figure out how to set up that algebra equation. And then find the missing value. Okay, well that's all for lesson five.